Medic, medic, there's an emergency aboard Esper. We need a medic. Okay, what do you do if you have a medical emergency and you're far away from help? And what kind of gear do we carry on board in those situations? Another day, another 48 miles. There were no dramas last night, apart from the weather, were there, Liz? No, none at all, Jamie. <laughs> three. Just before three, you woke me up to go on night watch and sort of I, I sort of felt around and I took my, my pill I take every day and I thought oh, I'll just put some eye drops in. I have a slight problem with my eyes and uh, squeeze the drop in my right eye. I don't know how it's looking this morning, but it wasn't eye drops. It was an antiseptic drop that you use for cuts and grazes and fuck me did that hurt. <laughs> Um, we poured loads and loads of water, kept pouring water on, draining it, draining it, draining it, and I've taken two paracetamol, still hurts this morning, nothing like the pain last night, but I felt such a twit, you know, it serves me right for trying to do things when I'm half awake, didn't check the bottle, uh, don't ever try it is my only word of advice, do not put anything in your eye unless you know exactly what it is, and definitely don't put antiseptic in your eye, it bloody hurts. What Liz's incident last night did bring home was how far away we are from medical attention. Uh, there was one time when we were in Egypt when on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day I think it was, Liz ended up in hospital uh, with a very, very painful eye infection. Ulceration. Was, yeah, ulceration. And uh, so this is what was going through my mind while she was hopping around, uh, tears in her eyes, weeping literally in pain, was that uh, here we are on Turtle Island miles away from anywhere I guess our only option would have been to radio through to ESCOM to get some kind of quick speedy delivery over to the mainland but it does just show you sometimes how precarious our lives are on board a boat in remote places it uh, can be a worry. A medical emergency on a boat is different to being on land because you may not have professionals nearby to help you so you've got to be reasonably self-sufficient First rule, I would say, is do a first aid course uh -huh. and get a good grounding in, in basic first aid so you know how to uh, deal with punctures and um, bad cuts and so forth. We carry sutures if they're really bad. We carry lots of painkillers. Uh, we even have thread to, to sew up, uh, lots of pads for punctures. But all of this is covered in first aid and as long as you do that course and take all that kind of equipment with you, should be okay. More serious injuries which could possibly befall when you're way out at sea, maybe crossing an ocean, then you need to have really good kit and you can buy these usually with the help of a doctor or, or a hospital and you'll get a full pack including even things like morphine which you have to sign for and which are sealed. I looked up many kits on the internet and there is plenty of information on both off-the-shelf kits and do-it-yourself builds. Mm -hmm. Top of my research results was the Adventure Medical Kit Marine 3000. It's a dedicated kit aimed at the cruiser and a peek inside the kit gives you a good idea of the kind of things you want to be carrying. We'll put a link in the description to it. The padded case is water resistant with reflective strips so it can be seen in the dark and it contains different modules specific to different types of injuries. There's a CPR module including a stethoscope, a blood pressure cuff, nasal airways, sterile lubricant, catheter, hand wipes and nitrile gloves. The medications module contains antihistamines, laxative, zinc oxide, cold medicine, glucose, cortisone, sea sickness prevention tablets, nasal spray and sting relief to name but a few. The wound care module includes irrigation syringes, antibiotic ointment, dressings, eye pads, sterile dressings, gauze pads, waterproof bandages and a scalpel among other things. There's also a burn and blister module, a fracture and sprain module, an exhaustive dental module, don't underestimate dental issues when offshore, and a bleeding module. Oh, and it also contains Marine Medicine, a comprehensive guide, written by a doctor who specialises in marine first aid. Of course, much of the contents here you can source yourself, so if nothing else, it provides a good checklist, but it is convenient having all of this to hand in one marine-friendly case. Don't forget, lacerations are probably the most common type of injury you'll sustain on a boat, so Steri-Strips or superglue are essential. You may also want to consider a separate crew kit for simple medical scenarios, avoiding the need to rummage through specific modules. 
You'll notice that the kit won't contain the more powerful drugs like morphine or antibiotics. That's when you need to speak to your doctor or hospital. And don't forget, different antibiotics treat different types of injuries, so do your research. I mean, it's difficult to get hold of things. I mean, even now, getting antibiotics is becoming more and more difficult. Yeah, I used to be able to stock up, particularly in Thailand, just over the counter, and I used to carry lots of antibiotics, one of which treated the wound that you got when we were in the Anambas. He got beginnings of um, blood poisoning, but I had exactly the right antibiotic to deal with that. So, yeah, do need to get hold of that sort of stuff if you can. And don't forget, if you've got a sat phone, that could be your lifeline as well. So make sure, especially if you're going offshore, to have a sat phone so that even if you can't call someone out to assist, you could at least talk to someone over the phone who might be able to guide you through what you have to do. Yeah. Right now aboard Esper, we've got some fishing action. Talking of fishing, here's someone fishing for your money. So what you're seeing here is an exchange of goods. Well, not an exchange, it's a gift. Uh, Roy caught a barracuda, so he's radioed through to the security boat and uh, he's given it to them for lunch. Someone's happy. <laughs> oh, wow. Beautiful, beautiful mackerel, our favourite fish. Two of the other boats caught mackerels and so we knew they were out here. And although I did my lining on my, my rod, needs re-spooling, I chucked out the yo-yo and here you go. That will make you and me tonight, Jamie, a lovely dinner. So you have, you were going to billet them. We were going to keep the good bits and then we were going to, going to make the rest into soup. But look at this. We've got fantastic steaks. I think we'll have two steaks each tonight and then two steaks each tomorrow night. I could even try my hand at a traditional local fish curry. I don't know gonna put them all in the fridge now and have a think about it but it looks they look bloody lovely look at that meat well as I focus on Chaska I just thought I'd quickly record what is probably going to be our penultimate anchorage no wait it's our ultimate anchorage before we go back to Kudat where we're gonna have a little leaving party but uh, last time we were here the anchorage was a little bit rough and rolly and uh, well not that pleasant but look at it now doesn't it look great Chaska there looking rather splendid with the sunset behind her. Over there, a few clouds building up. Not bad, eh? And if I just swing round, we've got this in incredibly noisy uh, Coast Guard. Not that I'm complaining, of course, the fact that we have the Coast Guard here with us is brilliant. Um, but uh, they're obviously getting quite excited at the uh, prospect of hanging out with us, clearly. Why would you not? Um, you've got the Coast Guard there and tied up next to them is one of the patrol boats as well. So they too making most of this beautiful sunset as the moon comes up, coming up for a uh, new spring tide.